Hey guys, Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana with another fantastic video looking at the 10 must-have rookie cards. I struggled a little bit with what to title this video and how to create the thumbnail uh, because I'm not one to go give people investment advice. I don't like to say buy this, it'll go up and do all that stuff. Um, I really just wanted to have a, a kind of a general conversation about the 10 um, people use the word iconic all the time. Iconic is a great word. I just, I just think these are 10 of the cards that if you wanted to have a complete collection, these, uh, and again, this is on a budget, right? So this is, you know, I can't go get the, you know, the George Mike and PSA 10, you know, uh, the LeBron gold refractor, et cetera, et cetera. These are 10 commodity cards that are must haves for any uh, complete collection on a budget and so uh, this is really going to be helpful for new entrants into the hobby it should be applicable and uh, provide some utility for years to come because I don't think this list is going to change very much uh, over the next few years but without wasting any more time let me uh, let's take a look here and I've got a little um, slideshow for you to make things easier uh, stay tuned till the end we are going to look at the top 10 in descending order, right? 10 through 1. But I also put 10 honorable mentions in here. I did not put the honorable mentions in any particular order. These are not in particular order when we get to the honorable mentions. The top 10 list is in order, and it's just the order that I chose. It's not based on value or, uh, you know, uh, anything else. It's simply, if I was brand new to collecting and you gave me a certain budget and said, go get whichever 10 cards are the most important in hobby history, for under five thousand dollars according to these rules these are the ones that i would get so here's our slideshow here the first thing is let's talk about the rules as always you got to make rules otherwise you know it would just leave too much open um too much open for discussion so number one it's got to be a base card okay so no one of one blacks no uh one of one prisms no gold prisms no parallels right which means no jordan inserts or anything like that again these are rookie cards we're talking about so it's got to be a rookie base card uh number two i just now noticed my slide is everything numbered one uh, I guess all the rules are the same uh, number two or number one second is that the card must be five thousand dollars or less uh, that, that's a pretty simple rule to follow it can't be more than five thousand dollars so if the card is you know uh, twenty five thousand dollars in a PSA 9 but four thousand seven hundred in a PSA 8 then I chose the PSA 8 copy because that's below five thousand commodity cards only uh, similar to the first rule at the top of your screen uh, this is commodity cards okay this is not silver prisms this is not refractors this is not RPAs this is uh, you know not like we said serial numbered cards either uh, using PSA grades only I had to choose right again I'm not giving investment advice I'm not endorsing exclusively PSA I just had to choose a grading company so I'm choosing PSA and we're using the grades in PSA condition to get below that 5,000 threshold um, again I collect primarily PSA and BGS obviously a BGS 9.5 or BGS 9 or BGS 8.5 or even an SGC card for some of these types of cards is a fine card I'm not saying that I just had to pick one and so I chose PSA because it was easier uh, to gather the data from card ladder uh, and lastly that we're using the highest grade with a fair market value of five thousand dollars in other words you know the, the card in PSA 10 could be worth eight hundred thousand dollars or two million dollars uh, I'm basically taking the card and then just kind of shaving it down based on condition to the point that it needs to get to and the grade that you need to get to to acquire that card uh, under $5,000. So again, these are the 10 uh, must-have cards under $5,000. If you're sort of new to the hobby or if you just wanted to take a step back and kind of start something new and put a new plan together. Uh, first, let's start with uh, our honorable mention cards. Uh, honorable mention card number one. We've got our 1961 Fleer Jerry West. Uh, it's a PSA 6 on the screen because you can acquire that for $3,027. It's a population 277. Uh, the 61 Fleer is obviously a super iconic set. Uh, it is the third mainstream set that I know of. You start with your 48 Bowman, then you move to your 57 Tops, and then I think 61 Fleer chronologically would be. Uh, there are other cards out there, but as far as mainstream, you know, collectible sets, pack pulled stuff, I think this would be the third set chronologically. Uh, it's very recognizable. It's very collectible and digestible. 
Um, you know, there's in-action cards. It features the rookie card of some of the greatest players that ever played the game, which we're about to see. So uh, Jerry West is the NBA logo. It's obviously got the uh, Laker giraffe up here on here. So that's a big card uh, in this. A lot of people like to refer to as an armpit card, just like the uh, Doncic base prism rookie card. Uh, but a beautiful flat top that Jerry West is sporting right there. So that's card number one on our honorable mention. Card number two uh, emanates from the exact same set. It is uh, none other than Elgin Baylor, who was an absolute phenom during his prime. Uh, just missed out on a championship with the Lakers because he retired uh, the year that they won the championship due to injuries. Uh, but it's the 1961 Elgin Baylor in the exact same condition as the Jerry West. But a little bit, slightly more than half the pop. So a significantly more rare card in uh, PSA 6 condition, at least. Uh, it, it yields a value of 2,659. Jerry West probably gets a little bit more pub, uh, generally, in the hobby than Elgin Baylor. Uh, but Elgin Baylor was a fantastic player, uh, just like Jerry West. And, you know, Jerry West is just around the NBA more as a GM for various teams. And, you know, he gets interviewed more. You just don't see Elgin Baylor uh, in the news very much uh, compared to Jerry West. But anyway, Elgin Baylor is the second honorable mention card. Remember, these honorable mention cards are in no particular order. Um, which is why you're going to see card number three from the exact same set in the exact same grade. Uh, in case you can't figure it out, when you take that jump from PSA 6 to PSA 7 in this 1961 Fleer set for these GOATs, uh, GOAT-type players, these Hall of Famers, uh, these top 20, 25 players of all time, it is a huge difference in price. Uh, so PSA 6 is kind of that sweet spot under $5,000 uh, where you can pick up a card of one of these iconic NBA players. Uh, and the third card on our honorable mention, as you can see, is the Oscar Robertson PSA 6. It's a pop 213, which is about the same as Jerry West. And it yields a value of approximately 2760 Again, forgive me, this video is going to air maybe a week to two weeks from the time that I produce this. So yes, those values may change a little bit. And again, remind me, let me know in the comments if when we get through this video, if I missed anything uh, or any cards that you think belong, I'd love to hear from you and, uh, and, and kind of let you know. And I apologize in advance if there's anybody that I left out, but these were my uh, top 20, again, in no particular order here in the honorable mention. Uh, the fourth one on our honorable mention is none other than the uh, Sir Charles, the round mound of rebound. Um, as you can see, this is uh, from the 1986 Fleer set, which is going to make quite a few appearances in this list, as you can imagine. Uh, you cannot grab his 10 for less than $5,000, uh, but the next best thing is his PSA 9. The population of the 9 is 1,715. As we all know, the uh, 86 Fleer set was printed at an alarming rate. It is not a rare set. The cards were not rare. The packs were printed all over the place. It was you know, right at the inception of the junk wax era that was to follow in the years to come. But acquiring the cards in high grade uh, are difficult. So PSA 10s are extremely low pop. Uh, PSA 9s, a little more uh, achievable, affordable, recognizable, and collectible. And so Charles Barkley's PSA 9 uh, is an honorable mention candidate here in PSA 9 condition. Uh, next is Akeem Olajuwon, another, um, another Hall of Fame player, another top 15 player of all time from the 86 Fleer set. His card also in PSA 10 is too much, so PSA 9 is the sweet spot. It's a pop 2100, a little bit more than Barkley, and the value is only 620. And I don't know, number one, the card on the picture here looks trimmed to me because it looks too narrow, but... Um, I don't know about you guys, and again, uh, all transparency, I am a huge 1986 Fleer set collector, a huge 1986 Fleer fan. I talk about it. I uh, educate myself on it. I'm on the Facebook page, so I'm a huge fan of 86 Fleer, but to me, the PSA 9s seem undervalued. $620. Uh, for an Olajuwon PSA 9 86 Fleer rookie card seems preposterous. I mean, that's like, uh, you know, Anthony Davis 2012 Prisms are about the same in PSA 10. Um, but PSA 9 Olajuwon Pop 2100 may sound like a lot, but you got to remember, very few people in the world are going to be able to get their hands on the PSA 10. And this is Olajuwon's only rookie card. I mean, he does have the rookie XRC, the rookie sticker, but... Um, this is all that, that he has. This is all that Barkley has. I'm not going to get into the star debate, but uh, this is the only PSA rookie card that you can get for a Lajuan, and it's the next best thing to the 10, uh, which is an extremely expensive card. So, I don't know. These PSA 9s just feel a little undervalued. Continuing, oops, I got the wrong picture here, but 
the Car Malone PSA 9, sorry, that should be a PSA 9. Uh, in PSA 9 condition, the Car Malone is popped 1773. It's only $484. That's unbelievable to me. That just seems too cheap. Uh, again, his PSA 10s, probably a few hundred uh, population. Um, and it's probably, you know, five, six, seven thousand uh, dollars but his PSA 9 is only $484. So Carl Malone also falls into the honorable mention for our uh, top 10 cards on a budget that are must-haves for new collectors. Um, next in line, 1997 Topps Chrome, Tim Duncan. Uh, his base card, I've got the, uh, this is a PSA 10 uh, because the PSA 10 comes in um, at $440. Uh, again, this is a PSA 10 copy of the Tim Duncan rookie card. It's pop 4402, um, and he is uh, obviously a top 10 player of all time, in my humble opinion. He and Kobe are indistinguishable uh, from a statistical resume standpoint, despite um, you know the uh, protestation of many Kobe collectors around the world. Everybody's got their perspective, and everybody's entitled to their opinion, but Tim is right there with Kobe. Uh, I think Tim sneaks into my top 10 all time based on statistical resume, and Kobe is probably right there with him. It's a fun argument to have, and two very, very, very different players. But your Tim Duncan uh, Topps Chrome PSA 10 at $440 is, is certainly falls into the mix. Uh, his Chrome Refractor is where things start to get pretty pricey. Uh, next is uh, our Giannis. Yes, I've got Giannis's uh, 2012 Prism. Um, I'm sorry, 2013 Prism PSA 10 in my honorable mention. So I consider this one of the 20 must-have rookie cards on a budget. Um, number one, because he's a two-time MVP, uh, he has already won a title. He dropped a 50 burger in the closeout game, and he's been a Defensive Player of the Year in the same year he won MVP. Um, lots of accolades for Giannis. He is just now hitting his prime, which is scary. Um, I have a feeling this video will age well, and most people in the world will agree that Giannis's 2013 base prism belongs certainly in the honorable mention, if not one day in the top 10 uh, commodity cards on a budget that a new collector must add to their collection first. Uh, so you can see his PSA 10 is a pop 2697 and a value of 1467 Obviously, uh, most of you will recall this card had a humongous run-up during the first quarter of uh, 2021. Uh, next on our honorable mention is the 1992 Upper Deck Shaquille O'Neal. This is card number one. Um, there is a redemption card, but this is the number one card, not the number one B, I think it's called. Uh, in PSA 10 condition, this card is only a pop 329, and it's because of the black corners and black edges front and back. Uh, the value of this Shaquille O'Neal card is $27.91. Um, this is probably not Shaquille O'Neal's best rookie card because his beam team and his beam team members only would be his best rookie card. But remember, we're talking only about base cards. We can't use inserts. And therefore, the 1992 Upper Deck Shaquille O'Neal uh, card number one pack pulled is probably his, uh, probably his best card, uh, best commodity based rookie card. Uh, that I know of. Again, no autographs or parallels or serial numbered or inserts. Uh, number, uh, the last card in the honorable mention, and this was extremely tough, okay? When you see the card number 10 on my list, you'll understand why I say this. I think this is the last card on our honorable mention list. It's the 2007 Topps Chrome Kevin Durant, card number 131. In PSA 10 condition, this pop is still under 1,000, just barely, it's 999, and its value is 2,080 bucks. Um, you know, obviously not a bad card to pick up right now. I'm not telling you to, I don't own the card and I'm not gonna pick it up, but probably not a bad card to pick up considering it looks like Kyrie might get uh, fully uh, eligible for the playoffs. And that's going to make the Nets really nasty when Ben Simmons comes back and guards all five positions and kind of runs the show and takes some of the load, some of the ball handling load and defensive load off Kevin Durant and uh, Kyrie Irving. Uh, ben can cover up a lot of the gaps uh, for that Nets team. And uh, obviously Kyrie and KD can cover up Ben's gaps in shooting and scoring the basketball. Uh, however, they cannot shoot free throws for him, so keep that in mind. Uh, but that is the last card on an honorable mention list. Uh, I have a feeling one day in time we may look back and people may make fun of me for doing this video, and this card may fall easily into the top 10 on our list. But that's it. So let's take a look at top 10. Hopefully you guys have had a chance to start thinking in your head what these top 10 base cards, these base commodity cards under $5,000 would be. 
Uh, again, we're pretty much choosing the card, not the grade. We're only using the grade to get below that 5,000 threshold. So we're really looking at the commodity base rookie cards that a brand new collector, if he came to, if somebody came to you, uh, uh, a friend came to you and said, hey, I want to get into collecting, what 10 rookie cards should I look at first? These are the cards that I think they would look at first. Again, I'm not giving investment advice and I'm not saying I wouldn't tell them to go pick up a gold or an RPA or something like that. I'm just saying if they said, give me something that's digestible that I can understand, what are his most popular rookie card, you know, this is the direction that I would send them. So card number 10 on our list, and again, this was a tough decision between this and the 27, uh, sorry, the 2007 Topps Chrome Kevin Durant. It's the 2009 Topps Steph Curry in PSA 9 condition. It's pop 1211. The card has a value of $2,150. I always get a kick out of this picture because... Honestly, that doesn't even really even look like Steph. Uh, he looks like he's like 13 years old. It's really amazing. He looks like those videos of him shooting when his dad, Del Curry, was playing and they would shoot during warm-ups at a game. He literally looks like a little kid in this picture. It's amazing he's turned into, I think, unquestionably, the greatest perimeter shooter in the history of basketball at any level. Uh, and become the multiple champion in MVP and, uh, you know, top 15 player of all time that he is. Uh, next on our list at number nine is one and only George Mikan. Um, as far as I know, this is the first uh, big time card for a big time player uh, that was pack pulled. Uh, these cards are little square cards. They look like little postage stamps. They're a little bit bigger than that, but it's it's almost a perfect square. It's, it's probably a little bit of a rectangle, but it looks like a square. Almost impossible to find this card in high condition. Uh, I think Card Ladder's predictive value is in the millions for the PSA 10. And I think it's a pop one, two, or three, something like that. If I recall, I'm not certain. So don't hold me to that. It's not a card that truly interests me. But it is a card that does have historic meaning because he was the game's first true dominant big man. Um, and so this is a PSA grade one, okay? When that's actually a pretty good looking one on the screen, if you ask me. Um, it's got all the pieces there. It looks like somebody chewed on one of the corners maybe. It's a little off center, but man, um, that's a pretty good looking PSA one from what I've seen. Uh, so this is a population 28 in PSA one condition and it's a $4,000 card. So even his lowest graded, numerically graded card by PSA, is a $4,000 card. You cannot pick up a PSA 2 for less than $5,000. Uh, card number 8 on our list. <clears throat> we are looking at none other than the Doc, right? So, uh, 1972 Tops Julius Irving card number 195. His one and only base card. And that's the beauty of a lot of these cards on this list. Not Steph, but uh, George Mike in and Doc is that they have one base, one rookie card. And then this is it. And so uh, for that reason, that is why I like the vintage era, right? There's a lot of reasons to like the modern and the ultra modern era. One thing I like about the vintage era is there's no barriers to entry. If someone says, what's Dr. J's rookie card? There's one answer. If someone asks you, what is Luka Doncic's rookie card? There is like 37,000 answers. And that can be confusing to someone who is new to the hobby, who's coming in and trying to collect some cards just to get into the hobby. Your answer for number eight, 1972 Topps Julius Irving. Uh, in a PSA 8 condition, this card is less than 1,000 pop and it's $3,750. I don't know about you, but again, that seems low to me for one of the two best players in the 1970s, right? Kareem, Doc, that's pretty much it. Moses was a beast, I get that, but I think most people would agree Doc and Kareem were the two biggest names and the most collectible players who dominated that 1970s era. Um, so that is uh, that was card number eight on your list. Card number seven on your list. Uh, here it is. So Bill Russell, and this is where I'm going to get a lot of heat, right, from people that live in the Northeast or huge Bill Russell fans. All transparency, I'm a Wilt fan, and so that might have some bias on where I rank this card. Again, this is not a perfect list. This is my opinion. Many of you are going to disagree. Many of you will think cards from the honorable mention belong in the top 10. Many of you will think I've left cards out of the honorable mention. Many of you will think cards belong in the top 10 that I didn't put in the top 10. That may be the case. Uh, but, uh, but Bill Russell's 1957 tops. Uh, in a PSA 1 condition is exactly $5,000. So I snuck it in the list. Uh, that should tell you something about the uh, importance of this card. Even in PSA 1 condition, it is a pop 5,000, and there are only 28 of them in that PSA 1 grade. Uh, this is a card that I do not have in my collection, and I have to remedy that soon. My uh, attention has been diverted uh, in, on other hobby endeavors, and my money has been going in other directions, but at some point, 
I have got to put this card in mid-grade somewhere in my collection. I just have not been able to pull the trigger. Um, be careful buying these cards. These are the types of cards that are showing up on eBay lately. Um, as being sold by a lot of hacked accounts. So just be really careful, guys, if you're going and you're trying to pick up cards uh, uh, like the ones you're seeing on this list. There's a lot of hacking going on on eBay accounts, and it looks like a legit seller, and it is a legit seller, but their accounts have been hacked, and their numbers look uh, more um, uh, look, look safer and more legitimate than they are. Uh, so just be real careful when you're buying these cards and do your due diligence and do your research. Uh, card number six on our list. Kobe Bryant's 1996 Topps Chrome in PSA 9 condition. The PSA 10 is beyond 5,000, so we're going to settle for the PSA 9 because, remember, these are the top 10 rookie cards on a budget. And so our 1996 Topps Chrome Kobe, preferably not a greening version. Uh, hopefully you can get the uh, relatively colorful version. And this is it. And I'll be honest with you, this is a pretty good colored version, and it still looks a little bit green. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Every time I look at these cards, I talk about it on videos all the time. I just struggle with 96 Chrome and 97 Chrome and some of the cards that green and some of the 93 finest uh, refractors. They just look green to me. Maybe I'm gun shy. I don't know. That's why I don't have a lot of these in my collection. I don't own this card in my collection either out of um, just a measure of transparency, but I am... Um, astute enough and educated enough to know that this Kobe Bryant 1996 Topps Chrome card belongs right here on our list, uh, right square in the middle of the uh, of the top 10 list. So in PSA 9 condition, it's a pop 4,101 with a value of 1750. Uh, again, guys, remember, I'm not ranking the greatest players of all time. I'm not even ranking the greatest cards of all time. I'm simply trying to list, uh, you know, if I was going to give a new entrant to the hobby, a top 10 list of cards to go get under 5,000 each. Uh, and so, as I said, I've always been a wilt over Russell guy because I'm more about the name on the back of the jersey than the front. Those of you who have played sports with me know that. I'm a very uh, selfish player. I like to get my field goal attempts up. I uh, keep track of my stats in my games. And uh, that's why I identify very well with wilt. Um, I also like to wear lots of gold chains. Uh, uh, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't have any gold chains. But Wilt was known for his gold chains and medallions and his sense of style. Anyway, Wilt shows up on our list. His PSA 4 can still be bought for under $5,000. I own a beautiful 4.5 copy of this card with a PWCC sticker, which I'm very happy about. Uh, remember, this card always features the um, not so... Um, uh, what's the word? Compassionate uh, depiction of an American Indian on it for some reason. I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, anyway, horrible color match here with the uh, bright red and the maroon. I'm not sure what they were thinking. But a lot of a lot of stuff about 1961 Fleer doesn't make sense. And that's kind of what makes it a unique set. The fourth card uh, that we featured, the fourth rookie card that we featured on our list, if you include the honorable mention cards uh, with Oscar and Jerry West and Elgin Baylor. So Wilt comes in uh, nice and neat here in PSA 4 condition for just under $5,000. And uh, he was truly a legend and an icon of the game. Uh, rewrote the record books completely. Card number four on our list, another giant of the game uh, who followed in Wilt's footsteps uh, and, and barely overlapped from a career perspective. The 1969 tall boy tops uh, Lou Alcindor, who later came to be known, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Obviously, uh, if you don't know that, you probably should click stop and turn off your phone and go open an encyclopedia. Uh, this is a 1969 Topps Lou Alcindor PSA 6 for $3,800. It's a Pop 725. Uh, 69 Topps, again, probably one of the 10 to 15 greatest sets of all time. Maybe better, maybe maybe top 5 to 8. Uh, very collectible set, very tough to find in good condition because it was very hard to store tall boys, right? There was nowhere safe and secure to store these cards because they are larger and longer uh, than the average pack-pulled uh, sports card. So in PSA 6 condition, this card's still only a $3,800 card. I say only, I know it's a lot of money, but uh, that's a pretty good value if you ask me. Uh, so that comes in at number, uh, number four on your list. So we're down to the top three. Do you guys have any idea who the top three cards are? I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to know who number one and number two are, and it's going to be a battle to see which one. Well, it's not going to be a battle if you ever watch my videos because you know who's going to be number one. But who is number three? That's a good question. Let's check it out. It is none other than the only rookie card that features two of the top ten players of all time and the two best players from my young childhood, Larry Bird, and uh, Magic Johnson, 1980 top scoring leader. This is their true rookie card. 
And oh yeah, the third person on here was also in our top 10 list for his rookie card from 1972. Doc, Dr. J, Julius Irving, uh, 1980 Tops, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, PSA 8 is only $4,800. I just sold a beautiful PSA 7 copy with a sticker to a good friend of mine, a local collector here in Lafayette, Louisiana. Pablo, congrats, shout out to him for adding that to your collection. But this PSA 8 copy, and which is a pretty good copy on here on the uh, on the screen, well-centered, centering's an issue, perforation location's an issue. There is a uh, horizontal black uh, mark in the bottom right corner of the card that is a print defect, which is an issue. So a PSA 8 copy is pretty good. PSA 9, you start getting pretty expensive into the high 20,000s. So uh, the drop from PSA 9 to PSA 8 is massive. The drop from uh, 10 to 9 is even more massive because I think the 10 sells for about seven hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars last I checked. But uh, the PSA 8 can still be had for under five thousand dollars. This is a must-have. I'm sorry if you are a basketball card collector and you want a well-rounded collection, you have got to have this card in your collection in some grade. I am not telling you to go out and buy the biggest and baddest copy you can because that's not something that any uh, you know that all of us can afford. But uh, this is a card you've got to have in your collection. It just means too much. They saved the league. They handed it over to Jordan. Uh, no thanks to the Pistons who delayed that transition, but uh, a must-have card for any uh, any true collector. Card number two uh, is none other than 2003 Topps Chrome number 111, the LeBron base rookie card. You can't get the 10, uh, even though it's dropped massively. It is still not below $5,000 in PSA 10 condition. But the PSA 9 is nice and uh, as, as it looks like hit a little floor here at $2,200. I know that's been a big drop down uh, since first quarter 2021, but I think these cards have kind of hit the floor at around the $2,200 value mark. Um, again, if, if you're having an argument about the greatest of all time, in my opinion, really it comes down to four players. Uh, depending on how old you are and how biased you are and where you live. Uh, but you're talking about Jordan, LeBron, Kareem, and Wilt. In my, this is my opinion, though that's my Rushmore. Um, you know, I think people have dismissed Kareem too quickly. Uh, I think Kareem probably separates a little bit from Wilt because of the rings, but I would admit that most people have now narrowed it down to two, LeBron and Jordan. Again, I personally do not think it's close. Uh, it is a fun argument to have. There are pros and cons to each player's argument as the greatest of all time. I've always held the belief that Jordan is the greatest of all time. Um, again, I'm a huge Jordan collector, but I also PC the heck out of LeBron James because I recognize greatness when I see it. And he's got some really collectible, fascinating, modern, shiny stuff that's just beautiful to look at. And I have fun collecting it. So um, I have no problem uh, getting along with collectors of LeBron or Jordan. Uh, but I had to choose between one and two. And uh, number two goes to the 2003 Topps Chrome LeBron in PSA 9 condition. If you haven't figured out who number one is by now, shame on you. Uh, but uh, number one is kind of a no-brainer, and I'm going to assume most people knew who number one was before we even turned the video on. It's the 1986 Fleer Jordan uh, in PSA 6 condition, right? And so there's the grade where you can sneak in under $5,000 still. Pretty good looking six on your screen here, a little off-center top to bottom, but that's uh, about what you expect on a six. There's going to be some blemishes, and that's part of what makes this card great. Not the rarest card in the world, but it is the most recognizable sports card on the planet, in my opinion. You can make an argument for the 52 Mantle, that's fine. You can't really make an argument for the Gretzky, even though that's an, an amazing, iconic card and maybe even more valuable than the Jordan 10. But uh, I think this is the most recognizable sports card in, uh, of all time just because of who Jordan was and what he did on the field. That's unmatched and unparalleled. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about Brady, but Brady's got lots of rookie cards. Jordan's got one. Again, uh, no offense intended to the star collectors out there, but this is the one. Uh, so his 86 Fleer, um, you know, PSA 6 is 2,091 pop. It gets you in under $5,000, and that's that. Um, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully this video is helpful. If you ever have a new collector that comes to you and says, hey, I'm new to the hobby, you know, I've got... 
uh, what is that, $50,000 to spend or about $45,000 to spend. I want to get the 10 most recognizable, iconic rookie cards on a budget that I can. I don't want to spend more than five grand on any one card. Here's your list. Just tell them, uh, send them the link to my video and tell them to click play. Uh, I am always interested. Always, always. I love engaging with you guys that are watching. I have a feeling there's going to be some disagreements on my list, maybe particularly the order. Um, but I'd like to hear if you think I left anybody out of the honorable mention. It was not easy. I mean, look, it, it's ridiculous. Stockton, Moses, Malone. Um, I mean, I can go down the list. Doncic. I mean, whatever. You know, everybody's going to have their opinions. I had to choose 10 and I gave a nice healthy cushion of 10 honorable mention. I don't think I missed any that belonged in the top 10, but it's quite possible uh, because I created the list simply by going to card ladder and kind of scrolling through and trying to figure it out. Uh, so uh, it's quite possible I forgot somebody who is an all-time great that, that you know belonged in the list, but uh, if I did, let me know in the comments and I apologize in advance. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying the videos. If you do, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Again, I welcome all your comments. Hit the bell icon. I re uh, release a lot of uh, videos on a consistent basis. I do a preview of the PWCC weekly auctions every week. And uh, I do a recap of the PWCC weekly and premier auctions every Monday after the auction ends. Uh, and then I do an Explore the Card episode every Friday where we talk about uh, a 1990s Michael Jordan parallel or insert card. If you're a Jordan collector, I really feel like my videos uh, are probably must-see for you guys. Uh, I know they would be for me, just like the old House of Jordans that we used to watch. Anyway, click one of these videos on the end screen and keep watching. And uh, really easy to reach, Cajun Cardboard on Instagram, Cajun Cardboard on Facebook, Cajun Cardboard on YouTube, Cajun Cardboard on eBay. So if you guys ever uh, want to communicate and reach out to me, I appreciate it. Thanks again for all the kind comments and the subscriptions. Uh, keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby, guys. And peace.